Greetings to you, our beloved people of this land. We call to you, <coughs> our cousins from across the ancient Pacific. We call to you, the natives of the continents. We call to you all of our Aloha Aina from across the world. We call to you, those who have not awoken. Wake now. Rise up and return to the source of life. Rise up, for all life is sacred to Kane. Rise up, heal this land. It is indeed that which feeds us. Return to the umbilical of Haaloa and gather together the families. Plant Halwa. Return his roots to the ground, for in doing so we feed the multitudes. God brings the growth, the rain, a seed, a sapling, a bud, a leaf, a branch, a tree, a tree steadfast, unable to move. Live, live, live in the rolling beauty of time. We have a question for all of you. Where are the waters of Kane that bring us life? He ui! He ni nau! E ui aku na ui a oe ei hea ka wai a Kane! Ai kai tina kala! Pou kai hae hae! Ai lai la ta wai a Kane! E ui aku na ui a oe ei hea ka wai a Kane! Ai kau lana kala! Ai ka pai o pua i ke kai! Ai a mai lana ma ni hoa ma ka mole mai o le hua! Ai lai la ta wai a Kane!
Good afternoon. My name is Wayne Snaka with the Sierra Club of Hawaii. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here today. Uh, yeah. uh, <coughs> October 8, 2021, one year ago today, marked the day when the people of Hawaii realized that a Navy commander had, while under oath in legal proceedings, failed to disclose an active leak from a pipeline connected to the Red Hill fuel facility. In internal emails revealed by a Navy whistleblower, a Captain Gordon Meyer warned his colleagues that significant amounts of fuel had been leaking every single day from a pipeline <clears throat> next to Hotel Pier, not far from where we stand today. <clears throat> Captain Trent Kalp noted political concerns if this leak happened to become an active leak during our legal proceedings. <clears throat> While the people of Hawaii have, as a result, been kept in the dark while thousands of gallons of fuel leaked into the waters of Pu'uloa, further despoiling this once abundant and cherished location, as well as soiling the graves of sailors who had given their lives in the service of the Navy. It was not the only time when Navy lies had tarnished the legacies and the histories of place and people. In the aftermath of the December 7, 1941 attack, which itself had been exacerbated by leadership failures and bureaucracies and internal policies of the Navy and the Army. Factually baseless allegations by top military officials led to the forced relocation and internment of over 120,000 U.S. residents of Japanese ancestry, the vast majority of which were U.S. citizens. Lies in that case tarnished the very legacy of those who had given their lives in defense of our freedom as the leaders of the country and military they fought and died for would go on to violate the constitutional and human rights and upend the lives of an entire generation. Sadly, October 8 would also be, not be the last instance of Navy misrepresentations leading to and exacerbating harms to people, to Aina, to the legacies of history and of sacred places. For one year now, we have endured a continual series of untruths, of lies, of implausible denials, which have only exacerbated the harms caused by the Red Hill Boat Field Storage Facility, and which now threaten to tie the legacies of Pu'uloa and of Kapukaki to the loss of the water source for an entire Hawaiian island. For one year, all we've been given, all we have are words and verbal assurances, none of which have kept us safe. And when those words turn out to be untruths, wishful thinking, misrepresentations, and lies, lives are upended. Our island is placed at the brink of destruction, and our historical and living legacies are soiled, potentially irreversibly so. So on this day, on October 8th, we recognize as a Red Hill lie adversary, marking one year of implausible deniability on the part of the Navy, reminding us that our people our island and our future legacy requires not words, but true transparency, accountability, and demonstrated actions. And our demands today are the bare minimum steps towards that end. I would like now to welcome Rebecca Garrison to help us further reflect on what we have all had to endure over this past year. Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you all for joining us today. My name is Rebecca Garrison, and I'm a community organizer with Hawaii Peace and Justice. I'm here to present the top 10 Navy lies. One year of implausible deniability, a moment of collective mourning. Lie number 10. We are working aggressively to try to figure out what is in the water? Admiral Tim Cott promised us that the Navy was working to figure out what was in the tap water, making people and their children sick and killing their pets. But they threw away all of their water samples and we have to wait months for test results, if they even share them. 
July number nine. There are no immediate indications that the water is unsafe. Navy Captain Eric Spitzer said that testing done on the drinking water had no traces of contamination, even going as far as telling families that he and his staff were drinking the water. Days later, however, Spitzer apologized profusely. He could no longer deny it. The water was in fact poisoned. Months later, video evidence showed a waterfall of jet fuel hemorrhaging from an overhead fire system drain line just a quarter mile uphill from the Navy's main drinking water shaft. Further investigation revealed that a worker had been hospitalized due to exposure to the fuel. Lie number eight, our priority is the safety and care of our families. Not even a year later, an EPA investigation exposed Admiral, Admiral Tim Cott's lie about Navy priorities. The EPA reported non-compliance with a laundry list of state and federal safe drinking water regulations, including geckos living in the water tanks and no written procedures or process of inspection of wells after spills. Lie number seven, we have no evidence to suggest there's ongoing acute exposure or symptoms of related to the water distribution system. If U.S. Pacific Fleet Surgeon Captain, Captain Michael McGinnis would listen to the daily phone calls that the Navy call center receives or read affected families' Facebook posts, he would see that many are still reporting rashes, nosebleeds, and respiratory issues. He should also watch the upcoming webinar, Living a Nightmare, Current Impacts of Navy Jet Fuel Poisoning, Oahu Water. And for more information about that webinar, please grab a flyer there at the table. And I just want to give a shout out to Faith Action for all of the hard work you've been doing. Lie number six. I'm sorry that your family is sick. We are not trying to hide anything. At the Fuel Tank Advisory Committee meeting this year, Captain Gordy Meyer and Rear Admiral Tim Cott denied knowledge of any ongoing health issues amongst affected families, despite being confronted with these same photos and testimony to the contrary. Lie number five, we have not seen any medical encounters in the last month related to Navy water concerns. At the same time, Lydia Robertson, the public affairs officer for the Navy Region Hawaii said this a mere few months ago, multiple reports of illnesses and water issues were made on Facebook by families drinking from the Navy water distribution lines. Lie number four. The Navy is committed to keeping the island's ocean water clean. This lie, stated by Robertson again, was exposed by the EPA just last month after the agency fined the Department of Defense $8.7 million for nearly a thousand Water Act violations at the Pearl Harbor Wastewater Facility. Quite literally, the Navy is soiling sailor graves at the USS Arizona. And the top three lies by the Navy, at least with respect to Kapukaki. Lie number three, the US Pacific Fleet is complying with the Department of Health's emergency order on Red Hill. Stated by Captain Bill Clinton, Director of Public Affairs and Outreach for the U.S. Pacific Fleet, it was revealed later in that same month that the Navy would in fact appeal the emergency order. Lie number two, 
The military and the Hawaii National Guard rely on the fuel at Red Hill every day. Just three years ago, Rear Admiral Robert Chadwick promised that Red Hill operations were essential to U.S. national security and were needed on a daily basis. Yet Red Hill had been shut down for nearly a year without any apparent impacts to military operations. According to Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin in a statement released this year, centrally located bulk fuel storage likely made sense in 1943 when Red Hill was built. And Red Hill has served our armed forces well for many decades, but it makes a lot less sense now. And the top lie, number one lie, I'm sure you can all remember, it's not the fuel itself that is making the people sick, it's the fuel in the water that is making the people sick. Secretary of the Navy Carlos del Toro said that fuel wasn't making people sick, it was the fuel in the water that was making people sick. No water is life, Fuel is poison. Words do little to heal harms or keep us safe. When words are nothing but lies, untruths, and implausible denials, as history and this last year has shown, people get hurt, human rights are violated, and the island is placed on the brink of existential disaster. We will not let history keep repeating. We will take action to prevent the legacy of Kapukaki and Pu'uloa be permanently tarnished by Navy lies. Olay kawai! Olay kawai! Aloha everybody. Um, Ernie Lau from the Board of Water Supply. I'd like to uh, just take a moment of silence here uh, for the the water that's been contaminated and to remember the waters of Kane have been desecrated. So please, a moment of silence. Water is life. And we as a community, and I am honored to be here today to stand with the community on this, on this extremely important issue. Because we cannot live without precious, pure water. And our groundwater resources are irreplaceable. The thousands of years that were taken that's taken to create this precious water resources in the area of uh, Kapukaki have been, have been injured. They've been contaminated. And I don't know how long it will be before those waters are again pure. It's vitally important that we all stand together as a community and not let this issue fade away and be forgotten and not hold those that need to be held accountable. We need to hold them accountable and not to let them off easily. It's important that we stand at all levels of government, from the city to the state to the federal level together on this issue. And I would just ask now my request to the Navy and to our regulators. You can see the commitment and the, the love that these people have for this, for our community and for this precious Vi. Please find a way to engage them in this process. They need to have a seat at the, at the table in this process. So open up and be transparent and allow the community to be a part of this process. That is my request. Ola ikabai. Ola ikabai.
Aloha, I am Susan Gorman Chang of the Environmental Justice Task Force of Faith Action for Community Equity. Faith Action is a grassroots interfaith nonprofit organization driven by a deep spiritual commitment to improving the quality of life for all of the people of Hawaii. Through our common values and collective power, we address the root cause of social justice and environmental justice challenges. Our environmental justice kuleana is to protect Hawaii's natural resource, resources, mitigating, adapting to climate change, and ensuring justice for Kapaiaina, Hawaii. An organization with many Christians and settlers, part of this kuleana is to stand alongside and follow Kanaka Maoli leaders, the people of this place. As we know, without water, there is no life. The fact that we are here having to remind the U.S. Navy of this again and again is disturbing. In July 2010, the United Nations recognized that safe drinkable water is a human right. Our human right to clean water is being threatened by the Navy's decades of negligence of the Red Hill jet fuel storage facility. The Navy leadership does not seem to share our recognition of the gravity of the situation. That, that it is a true emergency. In fact, in Monday's press conference, when asked by a reporter, will the Department of Defense treat this defueling as an emergency? Rear Admiral John Wade, the leader in charge of defueling Red Hill, deflected. The reporter asked again, is it an emergency? John Wade demurred, saying, quote, well, I haven't heard the word emergency come out of the secretary's, uh, you know, statements, but to me there is a significant urgency to remove fuel from those tanks as safely and expeditiously as possible. I reiterate, Rear Admiral John Wade would not use the word emergency. How can we take seriously a Navy official who does not recognize this emergency before us? Since 1943, at least 180,000 gallons of fuel have leaked from the Red Hill facility into the surrounding environment, and more is likely. This includes the 27,000 gallons leaked from Tank 5 in 2014. The most recent leaks are 14,000 gallons of fuel water mixture, November 2021, 1,600 gallons of fuel in May 2021. The Navy's own studies cite that there is a 27.6% chance that the facility could leak up to 30,000 gallons of fuel every year. That is almost a one in three chance that another leak similar to the 2014 leak will occur in the future. Yet, this is not just urgent, as Rear Admiral John Wade stated. This is an emergency. From a spiritual point of view, we recognize that water is sacred. Water is fundamental in the rites, language, and symbolism of all religions. In the Bible, the sacred text of my faith, there are at least 107 verses about water. Yet here we all stand trying to convince the Navy that our water is sacred and essential for all life. Like COVID-19, this threatens us all. And we know that the Native Hawaiian community will be cut deepest by the contamination of an ancestral source of life. And we know the burdens of dealing with a catastrophe, catastrophic contamination event will weigh heaviest on those with the least resources to adjust to a new normal of a poisoned water source. Mahalo for allowing me to speak, Malama Pono. Aloha mai kako. My name is D. Momilani. I am born and raised from Oahu. Today, I am here for a reason. As an impacted family member for seven and a half years, as a keiki oka aina from Oahu, my hundreds of family, a percent of friends living on this island are angered what the Navy ruined, and to me, their family and friend. The felt of distrust is strong. Rear Admiral John Wade 
I plead with you to please know Hawaii is, we share and we're open and we're honest and we do things the island way. Please include our Kanaka Maoli, our native Hawaiian and our born and raised locals to your seat as a joint task force Red Hill. Do you guys all wonder how life is on our Navy water line? Well, <laughs> it is still messed up. Yet many families like mine do not trust everywhere the Navy pipes exist on this island, such as restaurants, our two commissary, our base exchanges, certain businesses, including local businesses and schools. We need the return of bottled waters, free bottled waters. My home just a month ago was found by a University of Hawaii scientist, our number one hero to being honest to our drinking water, that there is a strong possibility of low level JP5 still in our water and they tested that from my son's bathtub water. The percentage of affected families still sheds tears with extensive medical procedures, physical pain, new health diagnosis like myself, mental health strains, yet many more military families are honestly not aware what's going on. Yes, there are ways to prevent and keep on top of future health diagnosis like cancer. Unfortunately, health insurances are denying grand doctors to this grand care. Not only that, there are doctors who may have their hands tied to treating environmental toxins. The Navy of past till today caused all of this. They again failed their home port with raw sewage into Pearl Harbor Bay or Pu'uloa or Vaimomi, where their sailors lays to rest. Yet, how the bloody hell did my birth island and Washington DC allow the Navy to uphold so much of our islands? Why does the Department of Health and EPA continue to have high scientific numbers to tell us how safe or not safe our island tap waters really are. As my voice comes to a close, <sighs> there is the first superhero I need to mention and I need to honor, as I have done on my social media to Ohana and island friends and military friends beyond Hawaii and on Oahu. The number one superhero, the first Navy whistleblower is actually a retired Navy contractor, Mr. Victor Peters. From 1989 till today, he continues to speak up for us and tell us he knows everything about that facility more than anybody does that's still alive till today. He was the one, thanks to him, that went to our Hawaii, Washington, D.C. representatives, Daniel Kako, and he helped pass the bill to help protect whistleblowers like Mr. Victor Peters. <sighs> I also ask those over the weekend and behind your desk to please reflect, reflect everything. What, what would our King Kamehameha the Great, Queen Liliuo Kalani, and Father Saint Damien would have done if they were still alive today? Aloha. Aloha mai kako. Aloha. Ova o nani. He kama o ke ia aina. I'm a child of this land. Before I start, I call upon Akua. I call upon Na Akua. I call upon Na Kupuna and Na Aumakua to stand with us today. To stand with us going forward. Because we need all the help that we can get. Not just from them, but from all of you out there. Hi. I stand here listening to all of these lies, all of the trauma, all of the heartache and the pain that has been caused through this ordeal. I think about 
the 129 plus years that we've been lied to as a people of this island, as a people of this nation of Hawaii. And the lies are continuing. We are a people that are connected. We are a people that have relationships, deep relationships spiritually to our Aina, to our Kanaka. And this ordeal comes about because of the disconnect of the military, the disconnect of our government officials, the disconnect of America. This is not just a Hawaiian issue. This is a kako issue. This is a humanity issue, which is why we are here today, all of us. And I speak to you that who are listening today, right now, that this is not going to end until this is fixed, until the tanks are defueled, until Red Hill Kapukaki is shut down, we will stand. And we will stand even stronger every single time. Our demands that we ask are reasonable. And I hold them here. Many of them. People who have signed this petition to demand what is right for the lives of our people, to demand what is right for the lives of our future generation. But we can't do this alone. We need everybody to come forward one way or another. I'm gonna read off the petition as it's written to John Aquino, Commander of the United States Indo-Pacific Command, in light of the following. Over one, over 200,000 gallons of fuel have leaked from the Red Hill bulk forage, uh, fuel storage facility over the last 80 years. A recent leak, two, a recent leak contaminated the water system for 93,000 people, sickening thousands, including infants, children, pregnant women, and pets. Three, ongoing health and water issues are still being reported by affected families whose water is now deemed safe. Four, contamination from recent and historical leaks is now spreading in Oahu's principal drinking water source. Five, over 100 million gallons of fuel remain perched just 100 feet above our sole aquifer, posing a daily existential threat to our water, our environment, our government, and our way, our communities, sorry, not our government, our communities, and our way of life. We, the undersigned, respectfully, strongly demand civilian authority on this newly task force. We demand commitment of sufficient funding and other resources to defuel Red Hill no later than yesterday. It should be done now. The provisions of alternative lodging and water for those on the Navy water system and appropriate medical and mental health care to address the harm they have suffered and public question and answer sessions between you and your top leaders with knowledge of the Red Hill facility, the Navy's water system, the status of our ground water aquifer, and the Navy efforts to defuel and decommission the Red Hill facility to take place every month, not when you want it done, every month until our water is safe and Red Hill is shut down for good. Our demands are 
Again, more than reasonable. <sighs> Clean up your mess. Clean up your mess made in Kapukaki. A marker sacred to Leilono. And remove your existential threat to the sacred viola of our island. Take care of the people you poisoned who you are continuing to harm, to traumatize, and provide us with the truth. A truth that has been wrongfully denied us for far too long. Ola ikavai. Ola ikavai. Ola ikavai. When we come back, we will come back stronger and stronger until this is done. Hola. So thank you again for joining us. That concludes the prepared remarks. We're happy to answer any questions that you may have at this time. If there are no further questions, comments, we'll close with Olai Kavai. A beautiful Oli Haku by Kumu Hinale Moana Wong. Olai Kavai, O Kanalo Ae, Olai Kavai, O Kuwainae. Eola <laughs> Ola i kava i no nakanaka e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e